started out the game wonderfully, finally put it together in the first half like I desired, like we desired, like our players desired and the fans. A wonderful first half, 29 uh, nothing. I believe the score was. Am I correct? And uh, you surrender, I believe, three touchdowns unanswered, close to it, which I can't fathom right now. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. So last night I'm talking to my producer and great friend SPK Speaks, and we're having a conversation, just something about the business and what we need to do to improve. And he's watching the University of Colorado. He's like, bruh, it is is crazy they are getting their ass whooped in reference to stanford university and at the time it was 29 to nothing i was like wow there's no way they are gonna come back from that but stop the show boy was i wrong something said just go to espn2 because i wasn't watching the game at the time and i saw the score was 33 36 and that was like uh oh Damn, this is getting crazy. Then, around five minutes left in the game, Shiloh Sanders had a play on third in about, I don't know, four or five. And uh, Travis Hunter was wide open, and he missed the throw. Oh and I was like, dun, 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 sound effect. <laughs> that one wide receiver, Alec Ayomano. Jesus Christ, I don't know what the hell he was on, but he was completely abusing Travis Hunter. It seems like, man, he needed an umbrella in Jesus Christ on that guy to guard him, and it probably still wouldn't even work. But then we all saw the ending of the game, 46-43. Deion Sanders takes a nail. And, of course, here come the haters. Glad that Prime lost. It's good. I told you so. They choked. This is even the worst choke than, you know, what happened with the Atlanta Falcons and the Patriots in the Super Bowl a few years ago. And let me tell you something. It is a choke. It's a tough loss to be up 29 to nothing and then also lose in the way that you did at home to a team that's one in four is embarrassing. But I just want to talk to you guys about that because that is life. <clears throat> Sometimes in life, you are going to lose when you really should win. Do you remember the Apostle Paul? There's a scripture and it goes something like this. That which I should do. I find myself not doing, but that which I shouldn't do, I find myself doing the most. He was referring in that particular verse to sin. And in that case, I should be executing, I'm not. But when I shouldn't be executing, I am. And life is backwards like that. But this is a learning experience. A lot of times you got to learn. You got to blow an opportunity. You got to mess something up. You got to really screw something up in order for you to get a lot better and that also applies to Deion sanders you're gonna win some you're gonna lose some but you gotta get up to fight another day now let me just talk about this because games are won and lost but character is built in the process and they are four and three and they've been competitive in six of the seven games which in last year they were not competitive in many games but again you always gotta look at the haters Always look at the people who are so glad to see you lose, but also be very, very careful to see what color those people are. Let me just tell you this. There is no absolute reason why anybody in America should be that's black, should be rooting for Stanford over Deion Sanders. And I've seen some of the people out there with some of the harsh things to say about Deion. I've seen, you know, very few people. I won't even want to mention their name. They didn't give him no clout, but it's pathetic. There is nothing to hate on Deion Sanders about. The man is a winner. He's not playing on the field, and sometimes you get beat. Comebacks come in every sport. Basketball, teams blow leads. Baseball, I remember my San Francisco Giants about 15, 20 years ago blew a lead to the California Angels, and we lost. The San Francisco 49ers in 2020 blew a 10-minute lead with the ball with six minutes to go against the Chiefs. It's one of the biggest chokes in the Super Bowl history. Guess what? We blew another lead just two years ago. In LA, NFC Championship, 10 minutes ago, we beat these guys like the last nine times. Guess what? We lose to Matt Stafford. And they go and beat the Bengals in the Super Bowl. But you know what? That's life. You're going to win. You're going to lose. The difference is, is how does it affect you when you lose? Let me tell you something. We all going to lose something in life. 
Some people lose their jobs. Some people lose their home. Some people lose their businesses. Some people lose their wife. And it comes unexpectedly. Sometimes things just fall apart. You don't understand why. You ever been in a situation where things are just going so well and just out the blue? Things start falling apart. Things just don't even seem right. You like stop the show. Jitter, what the F is going on, man? Just last year, this time, everything was cool. I'm not doing nothing different. But I got a word for you today. I'm not here to preach, but I'm trying to tell you something. Sometimes when you're growing and sometimes when you want to go to the next level, you got to get prepared for a big loss. It's not just going to come easy like that. In this life, you got to be tried and battle tested. It happens like that. And what you also got to have is short term memory. So many people who have lost something in life and have blew a big deal or blew a big lead. You know what? Some of them people never got over it. You know, Marvin Marvelous Hagler had a fight against Sugar Ray Leonard. I believe it was in 88. He lost that controversial decision. It made him retire from boxing. Never fought again. And what we would consider Marvin Marvelous Hagler to be in his prime. Same thing happened with Larry Holmes in 1985 in the rematch with Michael Spinks. Decided for him to kick him out of boxing for three years. George Foreman, after the Ali fight, and then I believe losing to Jimmy Young, took him out of boxing for 10 years. Just not feeling anymore and don't have the love for it. But the whole idea is, is to come back again and fight again. People are gonna always dislike you. Whether you blow a big lead or you actually beat somebody by a big time lead, they're gonna dislike you. But at the end of the day, you gotta keep living. You got to keep working. You got to keep hustling. You got to go back and learn from those mistakes. When you have a new team who don't know how to win, trust me, all they know how to do is lose. And I'm going to tell you this, and I've learned this, especially Dylan um, over here in, in Africa and, and, and having a staff and having a new team and a lot of times not being ready for this success that we're trying to go to. Sometimes when you have the mentality that you're only ready to lose, that's what you do when you don't know how to win. That's why you see teams who are young, let's say for example, you know, like the Denver Nuggets last year, they didn't know how to win for many years. They had to go through that process of being eliminated. Like Michael Jordan didn't know how to win for many years in the early 90s. Had to go had to go through being eliminated by, you know, people like by the Celtics, the Pistons. But again, learning how to win is a skill. Learning how to finish things strong is a skill. Learning how to go ahead and take out an opponent when you have them down is a skill. Learning how to execute when, you know, it's on the line is a skill. It doesn't mean you're going to do it all the time, but you got to be ready to do it when it counts. And sometimes you're going to miss a game winning shot. Michael Jordan has missed so many game winning shots, but at least he was there to take them. And for those people who have a problem with people like Deion Sanders, they are the same individuals who have blue opportunities too. They're the same people who fumbled opportunities too. They're the same people who make bonehead decisions. They're the same people who are human, just like us. And the reality is our losses help us get better. Our losses should help us improve. Our losses should help us expose our weaknesses. And we know that uh, we know that receiver over there, Alec Ayomano, was abusing Travis Hunter. And Travis Hunter, hey. We just found out that he has some weaknesses and that guy was really good. It's no doubt or no shot on him. It's just the truth. When you're good, you're good. And when you get beat, you get beat. But he'll be able to go back and look at that footage and improve on those mistakes. So when they play next year, it should be a different result. If they do play next year, I know they're not going to be in the Pac-12. But that's what happens. Live to fight another day. And sometimes you lose and that's okay. As long as you have the attitude to come back and win again, F the haters. Go Colorado, Team Dion, Team Prime. See you next week. Guys, subscribe at the bell. It's your boy O'Shea Duke Jackson. We're out.